So I'm gonna get started with a really, really simple chain stitch. And I think I really wanna start around my grandmother because it's all the way over here. And if you're not familiar with the chain stitch, I'm gonna try to, maybe I'll zoom in a little. So when I get started, I start by coming up and then either right there or right next to it. I think for the border, I'm gonna start right next to it. Um, and I know we, we probably talked about this before Initially, it's going to be kind of wonky. I'm going to do it like, like you're throwing a stitch and knitting, putting it over the needle. It's really awkward. I probably picked the worst picture to start because it's way over there. Okay. So there that goes. I'm going to draw that up. And I did make it pretty long, but so don't make yours that long. And so that's the first little piece right there. It's gonna be pretty small. I actually intended to make it a little bigger. So then you just stick your needle back into where it came up and then wherever you want the next chain to come up. And because I draped my thread over there, when I pull it up, it's already basically under the needle. And so whenever I pull this, it's gonna loop. It's gonna be like a little chain. And I think I'm just gonna do this around and I'm gonna come back and do a second row of sewing later. So I'm just gonna be working on this and chatting with you for a little bit and I'll work my some of my stitches around and compile this video. The reason why I chose a chain stitch is because of the connection. I could have done a blanket stitch. I could have done I could have done the running stitch. It would have looked lovely. But I mean, I only took one or two little workshops not too long ago and I think I've already shared that's how I came to find the bunny as a symbol that just keeps coming up for me this year and how connected it is for the word that I chose for myself which is self-compassion and thinking about putting meaning more meaning into our work than just we're gonna sew something real quick and make it look nice you know there you know, I think that might be the difference that there's absolutely nothing wrong about that. I do that all the time. I make functional pieces and I love that. And it makes me feel accomplished and autonomous. And then sometimes I just want to make for the sake of making and I want to make something pretty. And then sometimes I actually have some time to think and process and this is a way for me in my current state of life, right at the beginning stages of middle age for me. I have made a career change a bit, the same line of work, which is teaching. So I am living change, right? When there's so much change in the world. And what I was thinking about today as we were um, getting through this is that that stage of middle age because it seems to be where I'm and here I've gotten to the end and if I don't pull my thread and lengthen the tail it's gonna get stuck together so that's what you're seeing me do now it's just one strand here and I'm gonna go back and putting it kind of I've kind of made like an arc around there and now I'm going to go back through but I've been reading about middle age and I'm kind of <laughs> a little bit upset about the fact that in my schooling, you know, they prepare you to be a teacher and I do this for my own students and, and you think about just getting there and then when you're working, you know, you're learning how to do your craft. It's like with every profession, 
you're learning as much as you need to in order to get started. Once you've got started, you just want to learn to get better and feel like you can add to the world. And then you get to middle age and some things are feel different. And then for me, I feel really surprised. I remember getting to a place and thinking, you know, is this it? What's next? You're so used to being the what next mentality. Finding a partner, maybe having children, having um, your forever home, all these, all these things and these milestones that we feel like we need to match. And then what happens when you get those things and you're blessed to be in a place where you've been able to have those things. But yet, of course we could still be happy, but there's a whole different um, stage in middle age that kind of works through. And so what I was reading that just was an aha moment for me and was this idea that we build this identity of ourselves. We have this identity of ourselves in our youth and it's, I'm going to be a blank uh, profession usually, or a wife or a partner. Those are, whew, those are hard jobs by themselves. And then, you know, we do those things. And the idea is that the theorist Jung, J-U-N-G, um, writes about creating this so our social identity as we are in there. You know, we think so much about what other people think of us during that time. But then there's a bit of a shift sometime in the middle age, which um, there's lots of different ways. Middle career, mid-career can start as early as um, age 35. Middle age is said to start at 40. And so something happens in that time where we kind of start shifting. I, For me, I'm calling it kind of an awakening back to who I was and after all the roles and responsibilities I've had, recognizing, uh, Jung says that we kind of become, we find our true selves. Maybe we, ha we haven't really on purpose been hiding our true selves, but we don't really know until we get to a certain age and we start thinking, well, you know, what's next? Um, is this who I want to be? I'm not too old. I still have a way of being useful in the world. And how can I now apply those um, years of experience in a way that can be helpful to others as they just getting started out on this whole project? So it's a cycle. And of course, I'm learning new terms. There's a term for everything. And one of them is generativity just really getting to a place at a certain age where you start wanting to give back to the next generation or the younger generation and starting to think about the work that you've done in your life and how could you, here's another term, have career consolidation. Think through your whole career thus far and what are some ways that you could give back? And for me, I am going to get my doctorate and I'm hoping that some of the things I write will benefit others. But my true goal is to continue to be a teacher. I've been an administrator for several years and I really missed actually being in the classroom. And even though I'm not gonna be in the classroom with young children, working with adults early in their teaching career has been so much fun. So I see that as meeting my need of generativity. So I don't know where you are in life as you watch this um, and think about those years if they, if you're, you've moved into the retirement stage, you're out of middle age, or if you're on your way, but I feel like beyond hearing and learning about the changes in life and life's development. Middle age is something that 
we don't talk as much about or prepare. And I think if I had known to look for these signs in myself, I wouldn't have thought of them so much as maybe burnout. I would have been able to recognize them as normal developmental stages, normal progression, wanting something more. and understanding why change seemed necessary and that it was okay. We can do it in our own time. Things can happen in the world to make us have to, or we just have to be resilient when some changes come. So I'm thinking about that and wondering what these women in my family, how they made it through this time. And if they were still around, what kind of advice would they give to someone in their late forties or early fifties? I'm thinking about those of you who might be teachers yeah, during this time and the challenges you face and several people leaving. Um, what things could you leave for your own legacy and fulfillment of this stage before we get to our place where we're going to retire? Although I'm not sure I'll ever fully retire. I really love to stay busy. And I've heard that sometimes retirement can be even more busy than not. So here we're going to add a second layer and we're going to use the fly stitch, which is really kind of a variation. It also kind of uses some of the mechanics of the chain stitch. So initially you come up and then you go down in one place and come out to the side, as you can see. And then it's important to have your thread down and then you go all the way across from where you just came up and then come back down and and right up through that down stitch and so it creates this little arrow and if you go over and over again you'll see that it kind of makes this lovely little vine loop so you can continue over and over here and see a second layer and after that, I'm going to add just a few details on the photos and you can see how that turns out. 